Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, can somebody read John 13, 1 through 16? All right. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew the time had come for him to leave this world and go to, his, go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was, was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to portray Jesus. Jesus knew that the, the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God, and was, was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that he had wrapped around him. <clears throat> He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus said, answered, unless I wash you, you have no part of me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, a person who has who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that, that was why he had not said, uh, had, that's why he had said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Thank you. Well, okay. So I'm going to um, drop down to verse 3. Um, Jesus, knowing that all things the Father hath given to him, into his hands, and that from God he came, and unto God he goeth. So what are we being taught here? Just that one verse. A lot. <laughs> teaches us how important baptism is. And that, that's what happens with baptism. Okay. And, uh, you know, like he said, uh, not only your feet, but your whole body. A humorous thing. We had an elder one time that there was a baptism. The lady was being baptized, stuck her hand up, just the shock of going under the water. And he went up and had them do it all over again because her hand wasn't baptized. <laughs> okay, that sounds a little bit legalistic to me, but uh, okay. okay. I guess better say I'm sorry. Um, okay, so what, yes. I think the point of view that that verse is telling us that Jesus is over all with God the Father, but yet then he turns around and becomes the servant. Yes. Okay, yeah, that, yeah, that comes later, but yes, yes, yes. That's the juxtaposition, right? Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah, so my note is a guy God gave all things to Jesus. Jesus is in charge. Right? Okay. Um, okay, so also Jesus came from where? Heaven. But from God. From God. God. Right. Yes. Yes. Either way, right? And he's about to what? Go back to God. Um and this is one of those weird things because um, corporally, Jesus is not with us anymore. Is Jesus with us? Yep. Yes. Now, specifically, he gave us the Holy Spirit to really be, be with us, right? To be in us, okay? But in essence, Jesus is always with us, right? Um, I think the bigger picture here, though, if you think about it, Jesus already knew what was going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Jesus knew the plan. How did he know the plan? He was, it's his plan. <laughs> you know, remember, he's God too, right? So, you know, it's, it's all part, it's part and parcel of the same thing. So, um, he knows the plan because it's his plan. All right, anything else on verse 3? 
Okay, let's read four and five. <laughs> Just knowing blah, 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 does rise from the supper and lays down his garments and having taken a towel, he girded himself. Afterward, he pulled, he poured, he putteth water into the basin and then began to wash the feet of the apostles and to wipe with the towel with which he was girded. What are being, being taught by Jesus laying down his garments? Is this something that he subjected himself to them? Okay, yes. He lowered himself. He lowered himself, right? I was going to say, so what would a king or even the highest ranking no, person or no. any ranking person in the room strip off their garments to wash other people's feet? No. No. <laughs> okay, so. Yes. One of the lessons we learned from that is like yes. with elders, uh, I have always been taught that elders are the servants of servants. Okay. And and nobody's going to feel like he's gone in that position. And it only causes trouble from that time. <laughs> and uh, so it's, it's a, a good lesson that it doesn't matter who you are, you're a servant. Yes. But to your point, okay, so in the world, there's this hierarchy, right? And so the higher I am, I am in my corporation or whatever it is, you know, I'm the big dude, right? right. Yeah. Okay, not here. It's kind of the opposite, right? Okay, and what are we taught? <laughs> the teachers, leaders, elders, deacons, so forth, what? Held to a higher standard. Yeah. Okay, um, so now you are you um, so much more of a servant, the higher you go. <laughs> it's just kind of this, it's, it's a reverse kind of thing, right? Yeah, Tom. It's, it's an adverse lesson in humility. That's what it is. Yeah. it's it's where you will take you know if you will bring your outer garments off and get down to just you know your basic coverings okay you're like everyone else yep. and every, no one can be offended by that because you're putting yourself equal with everybody else in the room or lesser or or even less well depending on your status i mean it could be much less Yep. Okay, so note that Jesus put water in the basin. Not one of the disciples or some unnamed servant. Jesus actually poured the water into the basin. So again, he's doing, yes, go ahead. Um, there are many occasions in the Gospels, or several occasions, let me put it that way, where Jesus taught them about this, where the, the, the society's, and it's still that way, by the way, society's norm of you know the, the the poor serve the rich or the lower serve the upper you know that kind of thing <laughs> because on several occasions those disciples said well we want to be in the position of power yeah you know we want to be who's the greatest of us lord yes and, 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 and he he had to teach them a lesson on that and other places he did too and he even said you know in in the world or you know the 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 uh uh it's like this but you know not so with you Yep. So we're not covering that part of it today, but real quick, since Troy brought that up, thank you. Um, so if you think about it from the perspective of, Lord, who's the greatest of us? What do I always tell you often in this class? Wrong question. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, so that, it's like there is, there is no answer because it's, it's not the right question. Right? Um, okay. Note also that Jesus is not just washing and wiping their feet. He's wiping their feet, his, their feet with the towel or cloth or whatever that's wrapped around him, okay? So he's not sitting down there and, and literally with his hands washing their feet, but, but he's then, you know, whatever residual stuff is getting onto his, the only clothes he has on at this point, right? So it's kind of demeaning in, a, in, in, in an earthly sense, right? Um, which I think is the whole point. I think it also relates or parallels to childbirth. I mean, when the baby comes out, it gets grabbed, swaddled in a cloth and all that bad is taken off so the child can breathe and live. Yes. Jesus is taking all that dirt off of their feet yes. so they can be what they need to be. He's taking on that dirt. There you go. I like that. Okay. So in addition to all the lessons in humility and service that Jesus has taught his followers and us up to this point in his life, um, note that uh, he is doing something that only the lowliest servant would do. 
Um, do you think there's any significance in the fact that he's doing that now, at this point in the timeline? And I, I know God sees timelines different mm -hmm. than we do, but in how we see timeline, is there a reason he's doing this now? I think his timing is very important, um, obviously, but they had to be ready to hear it. You know, he's bring, brought them along and to go from who's the greatest to follow me and be an example of a servant is a big gap. Yes. So they had to come along. Yes, thank you. So there's two aspects of this, right? From the timing of it, it would have been too early earlier on, right? But now, what's about to happen? It's about to be, you know, imprisoned. Well, I'm not sure prison's the right word. He's going to be taken, captured, and crucified, right? So, right now, this is this is the time to teach them. Yeah, I'll come to you in just a second. Um, this is the time to, te to teach them. This is one of the primary things that you do to witness your walk. Yeah. Also, in a in a little bit, he's going to let the betrayer know that he knows who he is. Yes. And how humbling is that to have your feet washed by the person you're about to? Mm. Yes, that's a very good point. Yes, yes, because it doesn't it does not indicate, and all the implications are that he washed Judas's feet also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Could it be also that um, sometimes the last things, the last big things, that some were true before something even catastrophic happening. And what I'm thinking about right now is when my mom was uh, about to pass those moments right before she actually passed are some of the moments that are most vivid in my mind. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe that was a part of the timing also. That was just a point that he really wanted them. If you forget some things, if you have forgotten some things along the way, this is one of the things that I don't want you to forget. Amen, sister. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, if you think about it, some of the Gospels at the end say basically, it's a revelation where, where John basically says, and so many more things. Um, it's in the John. It's in the John. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, so this is like, I'm not saying they forgot them, but they couldn't count them all, right? Right. Yeah, go ahead. So, um, you touched on it, but the betrayal is going to be happening. I mean, right after this section of verses, whether it happened in sequence or not, either way, the next section of verses. Jesus predicting his betrayal, which was for his 30 pieces of silver, mm -hmm. money. And he's saying money's not important, service is. Yep, absolutely. Yes. All right. Verses 6 and 7. He cometh therefore unto Simon Peter, and that one saith to him, Sir, thou dost wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, That which I do, thou hast not known now. But thou shalt know after these things. Peter said to him, Thou mayest not wash my feet to the age. Jesus answered him, if, they, if I may not wash thee, thou hast no part of me. Okay, so Peter did what? He said, To who? Jesus. Yeah. God Almighty. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right? And so, of course, Jesus immediately cast him down and, and killed him, right? No. no, what did he do? Corrected. He corrected him, all right? So he didn't throw him under the bus in modern lingo, right? Um, he, he taught him, right? He is the ultimate teacher, right? Okay. I know Simon's, um, uh, Peter's faith wavered up and down, yo-yoed, so to speak, much like ours. <laughs> um, but he was submitting. I mean, if, if you're trying to... Oh, Respect, revere someone else. I think that's why he said no. I don't think he was refusing. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I agree. But, yeah. but on those same lines, he was doing that in line with the way the world would, would categorize. Yes. Yeah, so he was reacting in the in the worldly way, which Jesus right. was trying to get them away from, right? right. Um, but yes, I don't think he was blaspheming or anything like that. Okay. Um, he needed a, he needed a spiritual cleansing. <laughs> Well, don't we all? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so basically, I think encapsulating that Peter didn't understand. Well, Jesus basically said, "You don't. You're not going to understand this." Right. So that makes sense, <laughs> right? Um, so. Um, Brother did. So 
I, I think it's also important for the person who, who is being washed to accept that kind of service from God himself, you know, or from somebody who's, you know, a higher figure, if you will. Yes. You know, so it's, it's important to humble ourselves to receive it. So I had a lot of problems with giving, 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 giving. And when somebody wants to give me something, I'm like, no, 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 thank you, no, no, no. Well, then I, I had to come to realize that, you know what, maybe it's okay to accept once in a while. Yeah. You know, so it, it's kind of, maybe it's not the same concept, but. No, I think, I think, I think, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's very much. Nice. Particularly this time of year, right? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes gifts are given probably not for the most best reason, but sometimes they are, right? Um, so, yeah. David? Yes. I think along with that, I think there are times when we don't feel like we're worthy yes. of God's love. I think anybody's that's love. That was Peter. I think that that's the way we feel sometimes. And it's not just um, Peter saying, well, I don't want you to humble yourself. It's like, who am I to yes. accept, you know, you to wash my feet? Exactly. You know? And it's like, who am I to accept the Lord's forgiveness? You know, I've lived a terrible life, you know, and and, you know, some individuals, you know, in the worst times of their life have that in front of them. You know, it's, oh, I couldn't possibly be worthy of God's love. You know, right. I can't get out of this ditch that I'm in. Yeah. You know? Because of anyway, right? Yeah. That's exactly what I was trying to say. Kevin. I recently, um, and it's taken me a long time to get to this point, come to realize how when you hear it's more uh, blessed to give and to receive, the blessing flows both ways. And it's been just since this point in my life that I'm, that I'm realizing that if I refuse something that someone is trying to give me, not only am I kind of missing out for whatever the reason is for my inability to be able to accept, but the other person is not being blessed <coughs> also because it's something that they desire to, to give to you. And so I think for me, I have to start looking at it from both sides. I don't want to further disappoint or further feel bad because I didn't allow somebody else to feel good. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of gotten me over the hump <clears throat> to, and it's also helped me from the perspective of uh, um, realizing that there are times that you are in a position to give, but God has you there for a reason. And so take it as a blessing from him too that someone else, that he's allowing someone else to give you something. Yes, yes, very good, thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. By the way, you both touched on, I'm gonna paraphrase, it took me a long time to blah, 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 okay? Um, well, first of all, in God's time frame, it wasn't, <laughs> okay? Uh, but secondly, it's okay, right? It's not a matter of timing, it's, it's a matter of the process, and it's a matter of, getting from here to there, right? And you're never going to get all the way there until you die, right? So um, it's not, don't, don't beat yourself up, all of us, for the, for the timing, right? As long as we're mm. resting and working on it. There's a question behind you. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jack. Yeah, I think it's important that we understand that at this time, Jesus already knew he was going to be betrayed by one of his disciples, disowned by another one, and then deserted by the rest of them for a, for a period of time. He had to be full of emotion at that time, don't you think? Mm. Yeah, so of course that comes out later in, in particularly strong, but yeah, I think this whole, particularly starting now at the Passover meal, I think this had to be very emotional for Jesus. So yes, thank you, Jack. I think that's, that's a good perspective. Okay, so what is Jesus teaching us by telling Peter that if he doesn't let Jesus wash his feet, he has no part in Jesus? That's a scary thought, by the way, right? That's not a small thing, right? So what is Jesus teaching us there? I'm thinking about his, Peter's future. Many times Peter is the first one to speak up. He's not afraid to speak up. So his boldness actually comes into usage when he speaks on Pentecost for the first time. And to the and then it's humility when he realizes that uh -huh. he let Jesus wash his feet. Amen. When he has to preach to the people, when he breaks the <laughs> which is clean versus unclean and all that stuff. So I find it interesting that Peter's all, 
He speaks up, but yet he's always willing to step back and go, okay, Jesus. <laughs> okay, he's okay. okay. Able, but yet he's able to be. Yes, he does deny him, but who comes back strong? Troy. Yeah, there's some symbolism here that we kind of touched on earlier about being clean. You know, obviously Jesus is cleaning it. And, uh, of course, it's not his feet that ends up, you know, being the significant part, but it's his soul. Right. Uh, it's his spirit. You know, it's the, the cleansing from sin is the issue. But he has to, just like all of us, we have to humble ourselves to the point where we're willing to accept that. And Peter had to be willing, if he can't accept Jesus washing his feet, he won't be able to accept the cleansing from sin either. Okay, I buy that. Jack, do you have something? No. Okay. Um, I think one of the uh, one of my key takeaways here is that that particular verse, what he's teaching us today, is that we need to be fully committed to him. All right. This on again, off again, and yes, I realize our faith wavers throughout our life. <laughs> you know, sometimes in the course of a day. <laughs> okay, but big picture, we have to be fully committed, right? This isn't a, yeah, and, and this is what we all find very frustrating when you're, particularly when it's a family member and you're trying to, you know, bring them along, right? And they're like, I'm not good enough yet to go to God. Well, mm -hmm. get over it. <laughs> okay, um, but you have to be fully committed. All right, so 9 through 11 are going to take us right where Troy was taking us. Um, Simon Peter said to him, sir, not my feet only, but also the hands and the head. Jesus said to him, he who hath been bathed hath no need save to wash his feet, but he is clean altogether, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew that him who was delivering him up, because of this he said, you are not all clean. All right, so um, I want to point something out. At this point in time in the world, in the greater Mediterranean area, people did not bathe on a regular basis, okay? Jews did. Mm. They didn't necessarily bathe every single day, although they really should, but certainly before any religious event and really before any meal, they were supposed to be clean, okay? So Jesus is telling them, you know, he's basically assuming that, that Peter has been what? Bathed. But he didn't just step out of the tub or the shower. I don't think they had showers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> However, he bathed himself. He didn't just stand right there and then Jesus washed his feet, right? Um, he had to walk. And we've talked about this before. You walk around the ancient world, particularly in the city, and there was all kinds of nasty things on the ground. So that was the point. And probably from uh, mid calf down. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so in verse 11, Jesus is directing his comments to Judas. So that means there's nothing for us to learn about ourselves here, right? right. Not so much, right? So what do we learn from, um, from uh, verse uh, 11 in particular? Jesus loving those who betray him, who would betray him. Yes, and I remember, who was that, Gene, was that you earlier that said that? Uh, whoever said that earlier. Um, yes, yes. Um, so we're kind of, baptism is a once and done thing, right? Okay. Uh, we don't baptize people a second time, but that doesn't mean that we don't need to regularly kind of cleanse our soul by immersing ourselves in the word, mm -hmm. in, in Bible studies, whatever it is, right? However we get there. Um, but we all tend to kind of, you know, the straight and narrow, well, I'm, I kind of live my life like this, not intentionally, but I just know I do, right? Um, so I think there's a message there about to us about this is an ongoing process, right? Um, and yes, I think there is a message here, and it could be to us at some point in our lives, hopefully not, but maybe to one of our brethren, sistren, um, who falls away, you can come back. Okay, Jesus is there all the time. He's ready for you all the time. <laughs> okay, so um, anyway. So any other thoughts on these verses? I think one thing it points out also is he told him a number of times, but he really pointed it out boldly that you don't just love everyone, but you especially love your enemy. Pray for them. 
I mean, he, he mentions that a number of times. So I think he's also alluding to that with this comment. But I also think maybe there's a hint of repentance in Judas that he might be able to get out of him and say, you know, by doing this, maybe Judas will change his mind. We'll alter the plan. God and I can handle that. But you know, let me give him one last chance. That's kind of where I, I like that. Next, you think about it. Jesus is God. Jesus knows what's going to happen. Okay. But that doesn't mean he doesn't offer the opportunity to come back. Right. So, or to come from time. Okay. Yes. Very good. Very good point. Yeah, Tom. I think also we need to uh, remember that this is a, a, a continuing process, like you had mentioned. You know, numerous times in the Bible, you know, people are asking God to create in them a clean heart. And we also need to do that ourselves. We need to continuously look at ourselves and are we clean? Are we living our lives the way we're supposed to by the example of Jesus Christ? You know, and sometimes we really need to fervently pray that we will accept, you know, change in our lives to be where we need to be. Because once again, how can we help others if we are struggling with things ourselves? Absolutely. Which by the way, yes, but we will always be struggling, so we, we need to help others, right? I don't think that's what you're Well, doing. we're not going to be sinless, but we are, are also going to renew ourselves and create in us a clean heart from Jesus Christ. Very good. Okay, so let's go to um, 12 through 16, then we're going to move into Luke. When, therefore, he washed their feet... Oh, before we do that, um, I want to quickly talk about um, Peter. So I, I, I love the perspective here. So Peter's like, no, 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 you will not wash my feet. Oh, I have to get my feet washed? Wash all of me, Lord. So he goes from like, no, to this exuberance, right? Now so, you know, and some kind of alluded to that before. Peter um, is all in, okay? He sometimes loses his way, but he's all in, okay? You got to love him. Okay. When, therefore, he washed his, their feet and took their garments... Uh, took his garments, having reclined at meat again. He said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me the teacher and the Lord, and you say, well, for I am. If then I did wash your feet, the Lord and the teacher, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For an example I gave to you, that according as I did to you, you also may do. Verily, verily, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his Lord, nor an apostle greater than he who sent him. So very first, Jesus is speaking very clearly. He is what? Our Lord. Not just their Lord. Our Lord. Everyone's Lord, right? Whether you accept him or not, he's still your Lord, right? <laughs> you just don't know it. Okay, so specific instructions are that they should what? Wash one another's feet. Right? I think virtually all of your translations are something to that effect, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's limited that after this, they're not going to wash anyone's feet ever again? No. Okay. The example he set was not to peers. Jesus doesn't have a peer. <laughs> okay. Um, this was, you know, again, for that earthly perspective, those below. So um, this isn't just to wash each other's feet. Um, well, this is where I... You get the idea that there's a number of religious groups that believe that this is a command, that we should wash other people's feet and things of that sort. I mean, I think you hit it on the head, though, that it was a cultural thing. Uh, they took their baths, and then wherever they went, before they went into the feast, before they went into by anybody's house, there was water there for them to take their sandals off and uh, to clean their feet. It's just like the holy kiss. It's like many other things that are cultural. But I think we have to understand that, you know, where do you pick out where cultural things are are uh, a part of this and where it's not? And I don't know that we make the right decision every time as to what is cultural and what it should be uh, something that we follow. I happen to believe personally that this is a cultural issue, but. We have to be very careful in making sure we don't, you know, that's an interpretation issue. Yes, yes, yes. But I think it's, it's clear, yes. It is clear, though, that the example as a metaphor, okay, maybe not washing each other's feet. Maybe maybe yes, maybe no. But the idea of, of being servants to other people, the example of serving others is clear. Mm -hmm. and that's not cultural. And I, I'm, 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 that's not what you're saying, and I know. It's not cultural. That's, that is a command, basically, 
Okay. Um, uh, the, the bigger picture behind it is humility. Yes. You know, it's, yes. I think, I'm yes. not sure, but. Yes. And by the way, we've talked about this before. Whenever we do these things, there's always, it's the onion, right? There's always yeah. layers of peeling back the onion, yeah. right? <laughs> so, yes. Um, so are we only to be humble and servant like to Christians, or does that extend to beyond Christians? Everyone. Everyone. And I would argue it's probably more important to be Christian like to a non Christian mm -hmm. than to a Christian. Being Christian like to another Christian, that's shining the light, but you know, the whole world see. I, I'm, I'm there, that's good, okay? Um, but it's different to see something happen and happen to you. Right. So for us to be Christian like to non Christians, particularly what our enemies, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever those who do wrong to us, I don't like the word enemies, but because um, if you think about it, enemy is kind of a very non Christian perspective, right? <laughs> um, um, okay. So, north at the end of these verses, Jesus clearly states that they are not equal or greater than him. Okay. Right. So. I, th I think that's kind of putting a dot at the end of the sentence or an exclamation point, perhaps. But um, it's it's you're not greater than me. They're not great. You're not greater than them. You know, it's 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 not that way around. It's that worldly perspective versus what he's trying to get us to, which is I'm a servant to anybody that you put in my path, particularly when when I see that there's a, a need or, or an opportunity. All right, we got a few minutes left here. If you could all switch over to Luke chapter 22, and if someone can read us verses 14 through 20, that's Luke 22, 14 through 20. <clears throat> and when the hour came, he reclined at a table, and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after he had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. So behold, the hand of him who betrays, uh, betrays me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man goes. Okay, uh, Troy, that's oh, enough. Sorry, that's too far. Okay, well, you can never go too far in reading the Bible, but yes, thank you. <laughs> Okay, a few things here. Note that Luke, I, I didn't realize this until actually I was preparing this. Luke is the only gospel that has something like, do this in remembrance of me. How many people knew that? Mm. I'm going to try to but uh, <laughs> Okay, I did not know that because we all, we think of that as, as like bedrock, right? So therefore it must be in all four gospels, right? <laughs> well, it's not. I still think it's bedrock, by the way. Um, uh, I just thought it was interesting. The, the other place it is, by the way, in the Bible is in 1 Corinthians. Okay? Um, but in the Gospels, it's the only one that it's in. I just thought that was interesting. Okay, so verse 14, and when the hour came, he reclined at meat and, uh, and the 12 apostles with him. Um, first of all, when the hour, um, can, whoever that is, silence yourself your cell phone, please. Let me get to um, it. Significance of when the hour came. Um, First of all, um, when is this happening? Right before crucifixion? What? Before crucifixion? Yes, but, but yes. on the religious Jewish calendar, when is this happening? Passover. 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 Passover feast, right? This is, this is, and when does that start? Does it start at noon? Six o'clock. Starts at sundown. Starts at sundown. Sundown. No, whatever that is. Well. You know, yeah, yeah, so roughly. But so there's, when we say when the hour came, this isn't just when they all felt like it, okay? This is a long-standing tradition, if you will, and a direction um, since they left Egypt, right? Um, so the other thing is, is that, so it ties back to the very first 
on Passover. Then, okay, uh, Troy's uh, uh, translation said reclined. Uh, did you say reclined at meat? Is that what you said? It's reclined at table. At the table, okay. Uh, mine says reclined at meat. Who had sat down? Does anybody have did their translation say sat down? Mm -hmm. Some of the translations do, and I think that's a bad translation. N not theologically, I just want to point this out. They didn't use chairs to sit down at the table, okay? Tables were low, okay? They tend to sit on a cushion or on the floor, okay? Um, but the real point here, to me, is that um, this, again, also goes back to the first Passover, okay? And interesting enough, first Passover, they stood. Why did they stand? Anybody know? Except Troy. <laughs> they were ready to leave. I mean, that was, yeah. yes. they were leaving. Yes, yes, because they're about to march out and leave Egypt, right? And did they wait till morning to do that? Nope. Nope, they ate and they left. Yep. Okay. Um, so, um, first Passover, it was, um, uh, I can never remember his first name, H. Leo Reynolds, who had been using the fair um, He talks about, um, that they were standing with loins girded, okay? So they were ready to rock and roll, okay? uh, Because you might be possibly going to battle because they weren't sure, okay? You dress in a particular way and loins girded is important for a guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Um, note that this does not say that there were only 12 with him, but it does appear to be the case, okay? I couldn't find anything that, that basically said, you know, Jesus was just with his apostles, that is what it appears to be, and I think that's the generally accepted um, concept. Wouldn't what Luke wrote in the book of Acts, when the disciples had to replace Judas, they had to choose men from among them that had been in every instance as them. So mm -hmm. there, there were other people in the room. Could have been. Could have been. Okay, verse 15, and he said unto them, with desire, I did desire to eat this Passover with you before my suffering. Um, why the Passover? Why is this happening at the Passover? The whole thing. What is the Passover? What does it literally mean? Well, he's the sacrificial lamb. I mean, he is replacing that ceremony and that feast. Okay, okay. Um, I, I know uh, one of my commentaries pointed out that this was a hundred, hundreds of years old tradition, and we know exactly what Jesus had in his hand. It was Passover bread, and he took that that for all those years had represented the Passover lamb and the freedom from Egypt but he took it into the church and said, now this is me. This is what I have done for you. Remember this. Yes. But the reason this is all happening at the Passover is because what happened at Passover? What does the word Passover mean? What passed over what? Death angel. Death passed over the Jews, right? They killed the lamb, they took the blood, they Right, basically over, I forgot what the word is. Lentils. 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 Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, so the whole reason for this being at this time is because this is the pass this is the passing over of death, right? And that's what Jesus is about to give all of us, right? Passing over of death. Okay, yes, our bodies die, but we have eternal life. Okay? And I don't think anybody understood that. When, yeah. mm. um, on the so-called Last Supper. Mm. That's okay. <laughs> and that also meant that before you were celebrating the Passover uh, through the, the blood of animals, now this is my blood. This is about me. Yes. And we need to remember that. that that's the true cleansing comes, is the blood, the perfect blood of Jesus removes sin, or the curse of sin. Yes. And I don't know if it was foreseeing the possible legalism we tend to trap ourselves in sometimes, but Jesus was very careful here, right? Is there any blood being drunk by anybody? No. No. It's wine. Fruit of the yeah. fruit of the Okay. Um, but it's a representation, mm -hmm. as is the bread, is a representation of God's body, his blood. Okay. Um, 
So it says, before my suffering, what is Jesus saying to them and to us? He knows he's about to die. What's that? He knows he's about to die. He knows he's about to die, right? Um, so he has the omniscience of God. So the plan is for him to suffer. This isn't an accident. This isn't, a, well, we went down this path, but it's okay because whatever. This was the whole plan, right? Um, so his body must die so that he can be what? Raised. What? Raised the dead. Rise right. again. Right? Okay. This is the, I capitalized it, all three letters. Okay. This is the big deal. Okay. Absolutely. That Jesus is going to die. Okay. So suffer is in some ways an understatement, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I sometimes feel like I've suffered in my life. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, just when what Jesus went through corporally, forgetting about the fact of the emotional thing of taking on everybody's sins for all time. It's like blows my mind. Okay. Um, so verse 16, for I say to you that no more may I eat of it till it may be fulfilled in the reign of God. What is the significance of no more may I eat of it? I won't be here this time next year. Yeah. Pretty clear about that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, so yes. So I, my next question is going to be: Do you think it was only the Passover meal that he was going yeah. to? No, it's yes. it's broader than that, right? This is pretty much all encompassing. Yeah, the next time they partake of the Lord's supper, they will be in the church. Yes, they will be in the kingdom. Yes. I think it's also kind of key here not to get into the details of it, but the chronological order of this. Um, is not really there in what happened at the past, what was actually happened at the Passover. Because I think if you read John, um, this thing with uh, Judas has already occurred. And I do not believe Judas was there to take his cup and bread. If you read the chronological order of the way things are done at the Passover, because right. he made that statement, and you remember how. Uh, he runs, he goes out. I mean, Judas goes out. So I don't know whether it means anything or not, or whether somebody that's not a part of the church should take. He was not going to be part of the, of the church. Great. And so I think it's kind of important to understand that, that only those that were staying with him, of course, we do know they all kind of went sideways, but they came back. Uh, Judas was not going to do that. Yeah, well, Judas went a lot more sideways, right? Okay, so I obviously have some other things I would have liked to record. I do want to give you the final thing that I came up with, and that's that through all of this, what is Jesus establishing? New covenant. Mm -hmm. This isn't just an event, right? This is the whole, this is the new covenant. Past stops here, we go on from here, okay? That's, that's a huge thing. All right, let's, let's pray us out. <laughs> Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the camaraderie and the fellowship. Thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you for all the things that we obviously don't deserve. Um, thank you for your son and the many blessings that you provide us. In your son's holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody. See you next week. I have a question what you just said about Judas. Excuse me? No, Judas was you can't read so it's sharp. You have to read.